In 2020, the U.S. Department of Agriculture released a report called Consolidation in U.S. Dairy Farming, which describes the dairy industry's long-term transition away from many small farms to fewer large farms. Since the 1980s, small farms have given way to intensive operations that produce more milk with lower production costs at the expense of animal and environmental welfare. From 2002 to 2017, the number of dairy farms in the U.S. decreased at a rate of about 4% per year. Since 2017, this rate has accelerated. At the same time, milk production has grown. From 1987 to 2017, the total number of U.S. dairy farms decreased by about 75%, while total milk production increased by about 50%. Meanwhile, herd sizes have grown tremendously. In 1987, the median number of cows per farm was 80. Over the course of 30 years, it's risen to 1,300. Some farms today are much bigger, with over 25,000 cows. Dairy production has also intensified regionally. Just 21 states produce over 90% of U.S. milk. The regional concentration of dairy means that manure is concentrated in smaller areas, leading to greater water and air contamination in local communities. Intensive dairy operations also tend to be more mechanized and worse for animal welfare. Compared to smaller farms, operations with 2,000 plus cows are more likely to follow practices that lower animal welfare, such as using artificial insemination, using computerized milking systems, and using computerized feed delivery systems. Furthermore, as of 2016, 80% of all U.S. dairy cows were raised without the opportunity to graze on grass, regardless of the farm's herd size. Meanwhile, the vast majority of farms with 99 cows or less fail to earn enough revenue to cover expenses and their own labor. Many farms survive because they benefit from federal subsidies, including the Bipartisan Budget Act of 2018 and the 2018 Agriculture Improvement Act. Still, dairy farmers are aging out with the average age rising from 49 in the year 2000 to 54 in 2016. As current dairy farmers near retirement, more small dairy farm closures will be on the horizon, which will further increase consolidation. The report doesn't mention pressure from the rise of plant-based milks or from animal rights advocates as factors in dairy industry concentration. Still, animal advocates can adapt their strategies based on this report. For example, they can lobby to shift federal dairy subsidies towards plant-based alternatives or cultivated dairy made without cows. They may also consider building bridges with small farmers who are already facing economic pressure from consolidation by helping them transition to careers outside of animal agriculture. Finally, the report shows clearly that the image of family farms with small herds of cows grazing on grass does not reflect modern reality. Public awareness needs to be raised as advocates push to limit herd sizes, mandate grazing, and other efforts to help improve cows' lives.